So a couple of you have asked me what my opinions of this new Daylight computer are, the Daylight DC1. And well, what is it trying to do first of all? It's trying to be better than reading something like this. This is an OLED screen. And even on an overcast and drizzly day like today, it's been pouring today actually. I've come to the worst place to talk about this Daylight computer. Even on a day like today, it's reasonably difficult to read this screen because of just the reflections of the cloud. And right now, what are Daylight doing? They're telling their sort of brand story and their founder is doing all these interviews talking about how he's aiming to save the world by making computing a bit more humane, where we heard that before, a bit more enjoyable to sort of read and do things on the computer out in an environment, in a very sunny environment like California. That makes sense. And it will be good if there's two things on the kind of hardware side that they need to get right. It will be good if they've managed to get the pixels of the TLCD screen that they've got actually close enough to the surface so it looks like paper. And if they've got sort of matte enough screen where they can get enough contrast but they've got enough anti-reflection and I think that this might be why they've gone for a backlight rather than the front light because a front light means that you do have a larger distance between the top surface to the screen and if they've done something with the screen with these sort of micro lenses maybe to actually make the contrast high enough to make it appear enough like ink on paper to my mind it's a sort of technology they're trying to rival e-ink with. It will be good enough if they've managed to make it look like paper by using some sort of micro lenses. I'm a little bit skeptical. And then on the software side of things, they need to have picked apps that give you enough functionality to make it a usable alternative to something like, well, what I'm testing right now is the P12 Matte. And well, that P12 Matte, it does have a lovely screen surface for note-taking. And it does appear, although it's very bright, like LCD is, it does appear almost like a sheet of paper. It's a really nice screen. So they have got their competition sort of cut out, really. You're going to take on e-ink and you're going to take on these new sort of matte screens, the iPad Nano texture, then it's going to have to be something special, especially to command that price tag. So what actually is it? Well, it's transflective LED, so it's not quite the same as reflective LED. And the difference between that is that the pixels themselves in reflective LCD, they're actually reflecting the light. Because this has a kind of semi-translucent, semi-reflective back to it. So it can be backlit, just like a normal LCD screen, but it can also reflect the direct sunlight or any light from the surroundings. So it should give you a more comfortable viewing in direct sunlight, and it will be emitting less light into your eyes. And of course, in all the kind of marketing stuff, you're seeing it lit up with bright orange which actually I never find that too comfortable a reading experience anyway we should be able to limit the blue light that you get into your eyes at least what else does it have well it's a sort of stripped back Android so we'll see if it's got enough kind of computing power to handle some basic apps and if they've got enough in their own app store to actually keep you happy with using the thing longer term you're seeing all these kind of images of people typing on it and well if it gives you a good experience of typing it could be quite nice as a place to do type but you will be wanting some kind of app like google drive google docs or word to actually type on it also importantly has a wacom emr pen and that's great news for it so if they can actually get that surface to be paper like and you can enjoy writing on it maybe it could be a good thing but beware looking at the specs it might seem like all of the right ingredients but i would just suggest wait for the proper reviews wait for it to get into the hands of actual people and see what their actual real world kind of use case is rather than just buy it on this marketing that you're seeing at the moment and i have got in contact with them i'm hoping they'll send me something to review you'd never know but don't forget to like and share this one out so it can spread to more people make sure you comment down below because if they do see that people are interested to see a review from me then they'll probably be interested to collaborate and send one out it certainly doesn't look that slim as well and they're kind of marketing it and showing it in these kind of woolen cases which is kind of interesting it's definitely got that kind of californian kind of chic to it <laughs> And they're also planning a phone as well using the same kind of technology. So that will be interesting. They're certainly talking like they want to be a serious computer company in it for the long term with phones, maybe computers with these screens in the future. It's an interesting kind of proposition. And I'm not really sure it's going to do anything for me or for a normal user that this sort of Tab Ultra C Pro wouldn't do or any good e-ink Android tablet wouldn't do. Okay, it does have that higher refresh rate. You will be able to get sort of 60 frames per second. You would be able to therefore watch videos and show page turns and maybe you might get a little bit lower latency out of the Wacom pen. But I think unless that technology is really good and it can truly give you a paper-like experience, I think it's going to have tough competition in the e-ink tablets. And 
right now. All we're seeing are these tiny glimpses of the screen, and that's a bit of a sort of red flag for me. We haven't seen a sort of sustained top-down image or close-up image of what that screen really looks like. Maybe it's one of those things that, oh, does it really come off well on camera? But is it something that actually they're kind of trying to create a lot of hype and some sales before they really get it into the hands of reviewers and really show it off to the world in sort of real world use? And at the end of the day, I read War and Peace when I was 18 on paper in the three days and there was nothing wrong with that. It isn't something that's going to enable you to do much more than what you can already do. It just might be a more comfortable experience of doing that.